Well, coming up on today's show, the Tesla effect on big oil. The UK's first 60 kilowatt rapid charge point is operational and three new city cars from the VW Group. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are in the world, in fact. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's Wednesday, the 10th of October, 2018. It's Martin Lee here and I've been through every EV story today, so you don't have to. I'm trying to save you time with all of this. Well, thank you to myev.com. They helped make this show, published a brilliant new article today, by the way, about the money you can save on buying used cars. In fact, that's the first marketplace uh, all about buying and selling and learning about used EVs, and it's purely about used EVs. Thank you to yet another Patreon producer today, signing up in the last 24 hours. Drum roll, please. Here's the fanfare for you, John Riley. John, you're a legend. Thank you so much for helping out on Patreon. Uh, a quick mention for Stockholm, should I? I'm currently on, uh, it's, I'm on tour right now. <laughs> if I was a rock band, that's what I'd say. Um, I'm working uh, away for two days in Sweden, in Stockholm, after last month spending a week in Norway. Uh, I'm back in a similar kind of area in Stockholm. Beautiful place, by the way. Would highly recommend it for anybody that can come. Just be careful how many drinks you have at the bar. Not that I've had any, had any today. Uh, not the cheapest place to get a beer, by the way. And in terms of EVs, definitely different to what I saw in Norway last month. So got off the... Um, as a boat, actually, we sailed to Norway, uh, got off the boat, and every other car was an EV. Every other car was a Nissan Leaf. I mean, they were so popular. But then there was a ton of Teslas and just so many cars. Volkswagen e-golfs were pretty popular in Norway, actually, when I was there for the week. But also, it was, it was sort of the depth of EVs that, you know, I saw one of everything over my, my week there and some stuff that I'd never seen before. And then here, much more like me when I'm in London. So uh, a whole bunch of cars can go past. You don't see any. And then a couple of Tesla Model S's and then a couple of Model X's. So it, it, it was very different coming here. And I thought I might see more. And I don't really understand Sweden's incentive schemes, their tax implications on fossil cars. Because obviously in Norway, that's the big incentive is not to buy a fossil car because they're taxed so highly. Um, so I was looking into that and I, I kind of expected to see more. It's not as if I didn't see any. Seen plenty of Teslas today and uh, got a lot of hybrids as well. Also, in terms of charge points, though, which is interesting. I didn't see many of the cars, but I've seen loads of charge points. And actually, the charge points all around the hotel where I am, uh, which is somewhere called the Old Town here in, if you know, Stockholm. It's beautiful. Architecture is amazing. Really gorgeous. Um, lots of uh, charge points, but not just one or two. I've seen them in banks of six or eight or ten. So actually, they seem quite future-proof for EVs here, and and a couple of them just had no cars parked at them. So, uh, which is kind of my bugbear uh, because nobody wants to turn up and charge their car, and all the bays are full. But equally, an unused EV charger is a waste of investment, and so you want to see them being used as well. Uh, they were Eon ones, by the way. Eon's a power company here in Europe, uh, so I saw them all branded. I didn't see what who made them, uh, whether they were sort of Eon made or whether it was a different company that. Had made them and they were Eon badged and branded uh, but they were Eon ones and all the instructions in Swedish obviously but then they also had an not so much an English translation but English bullet points which is go online go to this website put your credit card details in and type in the number of the charge point that you're trying to use and you'll be up and away and charging which was fantastic and really easy uh, to explain and really easy to use uh, loads of 22 kilowatt AC chargers everywhere. Every every time I sort of looked at a, an EV charging station, there was uh, lots of those, which of course are a little bit cheaper to install. And then there were some rapid chargers as well. The typical things you'd see, the kind of 50 kilowatt chargers uh, with a CCS combo plug and a Chadamo and then a little, uh, little socket uh, with some AC behind the flap there uh, for bring your own cable. So I'll talk more about it later in the week if you want me to. Any questions, feel free to send them in. The email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. I never know whether you're interested in my travels or not really, but um, if you are moderately interested in in what I get up to and, and uh, all those kind of things, then send me some more questions. And it's Sweden's a beautiful place. Highly recommend it. It's lovely. Well, the the work that I was doing this morning finished a little bit earlier than I thought, so I have had a full day to uh, to sit down and um, enjoy a coffee in the square here and just go through the stories on my phone and, and find some brilliant stories today actually on EV News Daily. We'll start with a clip of Paul Snakey from CNBC talking about the Tesla effect on disrupting oil. 
Well, we describe it as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a triple effect. Essentially, the big issue is the so-called Tesla effect, the general end of the oil age theme that you know is a problem for these stocks. The second one is that as the oil price goes up, especially to the levels that we're at now and potentially beyond, it's almost as if the Tesla effect could be exacerbated by the potential for higher oil prices to accelerate the end of the oil age. And then finally, there's the overall issue of these companies, frankly, not having a great reputation in the market for generating good returns uh, and good returns to shareholders. And it's a, it's a, it's a real bad one, a, a, a triple effect that we saw really starting in 2017. This year, we've just sort of bounced around the lows that we've seen, which, by the way, are the lows since 1998. Um, you know, 20-year lows in Wait, terms of when relative. When you say Tesla effect, can you just explain that? The Tesla effect is just the, the, the overall concept that the 20th century was driven by oil, the 21st century will be driven by electricity. And there's a 30-year transition, and we're somewhere probably 10 years into that transition, and ultimately terminal value of oil has been severely affected by the potential for us to change behavior. Well, according to a report today from the International Energy Agency reported by Bloomberg, the global fleet of EVs is likely to more than triple to 20, 30, uh, triple to 13 million uh, by the end of the decade from 3.7 million last year. So from 3.7 million in the global fleet, uh, 13 million by the end of the decade. According to this report released yesterday, uh, that would be Wednesday the 9th of October uh, from the Paris-based Institution. Sorry, I, I pause because I'm recording this at the end of Wednesday, so I try and get the today's and yesterday's right when I record this, uh, thinking that when you'll be listening. Um, it was uh, set up to advise industrial nations on their energy policy, and they're saying the sales are going to be soaring 24% each year on average through to 2030. I found some audio today from BNEF as well, and they were talking about uh, the effect on uh, oil caused by EVs. Oil demand is an interesting question. What we're thinking about is how much EVs are displaced out of the market. Currently about 23 to 25 million barrels a day are used in the car market. Uh, that with no change to the efficiency of vehicles or electrification will go to 35 by 2040, 35 million barrels a day. But we think it's actually going to fall both as a result of electrification and internal combustion engine improvements. So we think actually demand for oil will fall to about 50 million barrels in the car market by, by 2040. Well here are some of the key findings of that report from the International Energy Agency. Number one, China remains the largest market market. Uh, that's totally understandable with their subsidies there, but of course I'm sure they'll be keen to phase those out as soon as is practical. Number two, EVs will displace lots of oil from the market, and yes, that's true. So yes, EVs will displace lots of oil from the market, but it's not going to it's not going to be the the one thing. We need a a bigger approach uh, to reducing our addiction to oil. Governments are going to have to find new sources of tax revenue completely. I was actually emailing someone the other day who said, I was having an argument with someone and they asked me about how to replace the tax that EVs will take away from fossil cars and I didn't have an answer. I replied on email, well, neither have I. Governments, I don't think, are thinking about it past the next election because... At the moment, fossil cars in this country are taxed really highly and EVs are taxed at zero pounds and something's got to change. I mean, as, a, as an EV owner, I'd like it not to change, but I, I'm also a realist. Someone's got to pay for the roads and so something needs to change. Uh, number four, at least 10 more giant battery gigafactories will be needed. Number five, buses are going electric too. And number six, cobalt and lithium demand is surging. And yes, they are on the shopping list of many people. But also recycling is increasing as well. And especially with cobalt, the amount that, that is in batteries is being reduced all the time. I'll put a link to the Bloomberg article in the show notes. Finally, from Reuters, nearly 40% of daily crude oil production has been lost from offshore U.S. Gulf of Mexico wells uh, yesterday because of platform evacuations and shut-ins ahead of Hurricane Michael. In addition to shutting the wells, oil production has been halted in the offshore drilling operations by evacuating drilling rigs and moving eight others out of the storm area. You know, there is one way of not being affected by Storm Michael shutting down oil rigs. A drive an EV. Well, let's move on to uh, crossing the Atlantic. And here in the UK, for the first time ever, all UK EV drivers can now enjoy the fastest rapid public charging options, uh, says Alpha Charging. Uh, the new 
chargers powered by renewable energy, Alpha Power, is putting in 60 kilowatt chargers. The first ones have gone in at the Crown Service Station in Brig House. They're pretty agnostic in terms of uh, the cars that are supported. Uh, you can, if you go to use it, uh, be sure that it's going to be capable of charging 60 kilowatts uh, and all the different plugs that you want are on there. The uh, CCS Combo Plug Type 2 is on there. Chadamo on there as well. And these new chargers, 60 kilowatt chargers, can actually charge four vehicles simultaneously. I like the sound of that. Alpha Power say they're going to continually upgrade the charging points and add more across the UK. Also going to be installing 100 kilowatt chargers at sites between major cities across the UK. Well, in Korea, how do I find these articles? The Korean Herald has been writing an article about the Kia e Nero, of course, a homegrown car for a Korean newspaper to report on. They say that, the, um, they say that defying the popular notion that EVs are unstable at high speeds, I hadn't heard that personally, uh, the e Nero glided quietly on the highway when they had a chance to drive the e Nero uh, from Kia at 120 kilometers an hour, uh, showing outstanding stability, they say. For most drivers accustomed to fueling up their cars in a few minutes, the time required to charge an EV might come across as a downside side, says the newspaper. Uh, the trade-off, however, was exceptional cost effectiveness. $4.30 to charge almost 30 kilowatt hours, uh, which converts to 170 kilometers driving distance in the Kia e-Nero. Uh, that would have cost around 9,000 won, about double, actually. Um, and no more than that, actually. Uh, about a tenth of the cost of filling with gas in the average mid-sized sedan. Well, the number of EV chargers in Korea has also been on the increase pretty quickly. Last tally, its most recent tally, 5,886, that count was done in June. It was eight times the number just three years ago. We stood at 771, according to the Environment Ministry. Well, some news from VW Group, and this was a couple of days ago it came out, and I've kind of hesitated on this because, you know... There's a difference between making an announcement and making a car. But anyway, they've made an announcement. Starting next year, they are going to bring, they're going to start work on uh, their own new city cars, uh, the little small city cars that uh, might be in, more in your price tag, you should say. Uh, the Volkswagen E-Up, the second edition of that, the E-Up 2.0. The Skoda E-City Go and the Seat E-Me, E-My, M-E. Anyway, E hyphen M double I. According to Auto Build in Germany, the battery pack configuration is going to stay the same. However, the density gets a lot better. So they move from the Sanyo Panasonic battery cells with 25 amp hour uh, capacity, and they're going to be upgraded to the 50 amp hour cells from Samsung SDI. Now, Samsung is already producing battery cells at their plant in Hungary, and with the 50 amp hour cells, the battery pack will have a total capacity of well, total capacity, 37.7 kilowatt hours. Um, so you'd probably say, what was that? Mid-30s on usable? Maybe 35, 36 kilowatt hours usable? Uh, announced by Autobuild, uh, they say the range is 270 kilometers on the new WLTP cycle, which makes sense. These cars are small, tiny little city cars. You can get four people in just, but they're already designed um, for that. But with a nice, big, bigger battery in... Let's hope they come at sensible prices whenever they come. No dates, as you probably imagined on that one, about when we can finally buy them. Well, Dominic Can Inside EVs says that Nissan is supposedly bringing an all-electric crossover to market based on the Nissan IMX concept and built on a dedicated platform. Uh, thought to still be a couple of years away, says, uh, says Dominic, and I was retweeting his link earlier. Uh, he says that uh, it may come with a price tag. He, the best guess is $45,000 and 220 miles range. That is quite a lot of money for not a lot of range compared to the Chevy Bolt, the Model 3, which even at $35,000 is a very compelling car, even with a shorter range than the long range version. That's kind of obvious. The short range version does a less range. Uh, and if you add in the Kia e Nero and the Hyundai Kona, which <clears throat> can I just add? are on the market now. And if they're not in the market where you are, which is in North America, they're coming to the market very soon. That's more than this car, this Nissan concept, which is two years away. 
Well, a couple more stories today. An EV box and charge point, two of the world's leading providers of EV charging, has announced a landmark roaming partnership. It enables EV drivers to roam between charging networks, making EV charging more accessible than ever. Well, the roaming partnership is going to enable drivers on the EV box and charge point networks to access public charges whilst you travel throughout Europe and North America. The agreement eliminates the need to register for multiple accounts and multiple different ways of charging, ensures the drivers don't incur additional fees when they're roaming as well, and the partnership represents the first ever global agreement to enable roaming between EV charging networks and reinforces the company's shared commitment, they say, to provide an open network accessible for all. And finally, in Germany today, it's been a, um, an interesting day actually in Germany. We've got some news on a new truck sharing scheme tomorrow. Tomorrow, and as I was coming out to record, uh, coming out to record the podcast, that's my brain on automatic. I haven't come out anywhere. I'm sitting in my hotel room at the moment. I normally go out to record the podcast. Um, and as I was about to start recording the podcast, I saw the news break uh, earlier from uh, e- the EU Environment um, Ministry, and that's not his full name, but anyway. Uh, and they were taking on board the vote of the European Parliament last week, which were voting for more stringent emissions, and they were kind of compromising them and watering them down a little bit. I'm sure there's some pressure there from Germany and the diesel makers. So uh, uh, let me fully understand that because I've only read a couple of tweets, and that'll be on tomorrow's podcast. But the news I have understood today from Germany is that a Berlin court today announced Germany's capital in Berlin is going to ban older diesel cars from some of its roads, uh, dealing a blow to the government's attempts to avoid any restrictions on diesel diesels while they try and get air pollution under control, according to uh, this article on Reuters and reported by Autoblog, on at least 11 stretches of road suffering the highest levels of nitrogen oxide per pollution. Berlin must ban vehicles, which are the older diesels, Euro 5 emissions and older. Uh, the court said in a statement, it added the city state had not done enough to keep air pollution within permitted limits. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to read some more. Well, on to our community section of the podcast. If you want to join in with the question of the week, and I would urge you to, and I'd love to hear from you. The email address is uh, in a moment, by the way, but here's the question. What incentives are available where you live? Which ones have you taken advantage of? And which incentives, if any, are the most worthwhile at a local or a national level? Well, you can email hello at evnewsdaily.com. You can use the comments on Facebook or YouTube, and there's a feedback form on the blog. And there are 96 patrons of the show uh, helping to make this program wherever I end up in the world and get sent to for travel. um, I'll always try and bring you a program, even if it's very late in a hotel room in Sweden. Uh, You can check out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily, and I promise I'll work super hard for you. You can check out the podcast in all the places where you get podcasts. The blog is evnewsdaily.com. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you when I've flown back to the UK tomorrow.